All right, so here we go. Um, today we're gonna be go over, going over some quick string manipulation and some of the functions that we have available to us. Um, really, this is the bread and butter of most programmers uh, because we deal with strings all the time and it's very easy. Um, and C, C Sharp, once you get the hang of it and how to use some of the built-in functions, uh, it makes it really, really easy to do certain things. Uh, other other languages don't have this, or it's very difficult to do, or we're well, not difficult, just a pain in the ass. But let's use what we have. Also, we're we're gonna work on maybe a little bit problem solving using some of these functions, just a quickie, and um, you know to put it to work. Okay. Uh, so we've kind of been going over uh, before we started recording uh, a few of these. And uh, let's go over the most basic ones and the most important ones. So remember, these are going to be the building blocks of you dealing with string problems and string, well, problem solving with um, anything having to do with strings. This is going to be your tool set that you're going to have. Make sure your tool set for dealing with strings um, is strong, right? This is, I'm going to give you the basics, what you need, but it's important for you to beef it up and practice it. Okay? That's very important. Um, another thing is that um, this is, you're going to be using this pretty often, so again, I, I encourage you to use it and get all the practice that, that you can. Okay, so the first thing that we need to cover or that we need to understand is that in C Sharp, everything, there, well, everything comes from the class object. Okay, so I know this is, is a kind of a roundabout way, but this is important. C sharp, every class object comes from the object class. Object. Um, that's okay. Just letting, okay, so that's good. You might not understand that 100% yet, or you might. Um, but that is, you know, just take it on faith for now. Okay. Uh, object has certain built-in methods that you can use, methods and properties. Okay. Uh, one of them is called to string, which basically returns information about that particular class that you're using okay um, so yeah well let me let me write down returns info about that particular class uh, okay so how is this important why do one want to know this okay depending on the class or object that you are using, it returns different kinds of information. Okay, this is important. Again, hammer this into your head because it's very important. All right. Uh, when it comes to, let's say, a string, okay, if it's a string, uh, what kind of information do you think is going to return? A string is a prime, kind of like a primitive type. So, well, if it's a string, it just returns the value of the string. Okay, what about an integer? What do you think it's going to return? It's going to return the value of that integer as a string. So an example would be if I have something in five, you know, in number equals five. Then if I said number to string, what do you think that is going to give me? Number to string. is going to give me the equivalent of the value in the string form. 
Okay. Um, is that somewhat clear? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So what if I have, let me, let's do actual exercises to bring it home. It's very important. So if I have a long, long temp equals 179. So what would temp dot two string give me? What would that be equal to? Uh, yeah, sorry, I just did this dot to separate. Sorry, it's just 179. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is good. Um, yeah, so would be equals to 179. 179, the string, right? Okay, so primitives, aka simple types, that integers, strings, um, longs would always give their value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like uh, int string long always give their value. All right, uh, pretty straightforward, right? That's simple. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, non-primitive or simple uh, objects, uh, it depends. That kind of a little bit tricky. So, so non-primitives, uh, simple types. Are different. That kind of depends on on the class itself or the object itself and what it does. Okay, so that is kind of a case by case, um, yeah, case by case thing, right? Okay, so in our one good example though is daytime. Okay. So if you have something called date, you know, of type date time, and you do date, date dot to string, mm -hmm. gives you, it gives you uh, the date and a string, uh, in a string format. So in this case, um, it would be something like this. Uh, yeah, let's just steal this for now. Let's just make believe that it gives you something like this. Something like... There we go. Yeah, because the string function, the string method of this object, of this class, returns something like this. Um, it's up to you kind of to play around and mess around and see what kind of things different functions return. Um, I mean, different classes return when you use their two string. Sometimes they don't return anything. Sometimes they just turn, yeah, sometimes they return the type. They turn the type. Um, and sometimes nothing, really. Well, most of the time it's just a type. Yeah, sometimes they return the type or other info. Okay, beautiful. So now we have some kind of base of, uh, of strings. And so tell me, do you guys remember what is a string, pretty much? Uh, what was the case? What what is the base case? What is a string? When you think about it and really come down to it, what is a string? 
in our in our jargon somewhat. <laughs> It is an array of characters. Yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah, the string is a, uh, it's an array of characters. That's all it is. So example. So in our minds or in, in, in memory even, um, the string, let's say we have something called string name equals Bob. Inherently, inside somewhere in, in memory, right? What it really looks like is it's kind of an array. Um, just not really, but but yes, yes. It's it's kind of a collection of characters. So it has it's kind of like Bob. It's Bob as a character. It's like, I don't want to. Well, I guess. Yeah, I guess I'll do this. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. I mean, and I don't want to don't want to do it like this yet, but because this is gonna kind of interfere with the next example. But yeah. So now a string, Bob. All it is is just uh, an array of characters. So it's gonna be kind of Bob in the first one. B. Then O. In the second one, and then Bob in the third one. Kind of like that, right? But I, I want you yeah, to to re just remember that that's kind of how it is. That so it, all that string is, all it is is just it's an array of characters, right? Okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> so now we can actually uh, get into the functions. Well, first of all, why would we want to mess around with strings and string manipulations? Is it useful at all? Hmm? What do you guys think? I mean, do we need to manipulate strings at all while we're programming? Is it important? Uh, I'm sure there's a good case for it. We were learning about it, and it was asked in the interview. So. Okay, there you go. Well, yeah, no, the, so the answer to this is yes, it's important. And in everyday life, really, uh, as a programmer, you are manipulating strings all the time, whether chopping off date, date parts, chopping off parts of a name or a last name, checking whether a name contains something, contains another word, checking whether another word starts with another word or ends with another word, um, ripping off spaces from words, uh, replacing different characters in a string, taking them all out uh, from a string, etc., etc. right? So you guys kind of see how messing around with, with you know, string manipulation and strings and characters is very important because really it's, it's done all the time. Okay, right here. So now let's uh, let's just do some of the some of the basic ones. Okay, so string methods. So string properties and methods. Here, beautiful. Yeah, so this is definitely uh, is one of the most important ones, and we should have gotten to this sooner. But it's all good. It's all good. Let's do give it a. 14 flip something like that. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's tackle some of the basic ones. Let's tackle some of the most basic ones. Uh, now, well, what is the first thing you may want to know about a certain string? Okay, let, let's say. Well, first of all, let's establish a base case. Uh, I'm just gonna steal this string here. For now, let's just steal this string here. I'm stealing it. And I'm calling it uh, string. I'm just going to call it, uh, I don't know, my string or something. Just remember that if you copy and paste this, these damn um, quotes don't work in C sharp, I don't think. Maybe. Yeah, the quotes that this editor uses 
changes the meaning of yeah these are different quotes than when when you paste them here it pastes as a kind of a weird yeah this quote is not the same as this quote so keep an eye on that if you cut and paste it will tell you though that hey this quote is not good okay so now let's test out different uh, different different functions different properties um and then see see what we can get and how we can manipulate strings I'm going to go through a few of these because they're kind of simple. And then we'll kind of spend a little more time in some of the more um, uh, tricksy ones. Not really tricksy, but, you know. Okay, so our base case is now my string. Um, is that cool? All right. So I'm just going to copy and paste this here. And just copy. It. Okay, so now... If I wanted to do the length, the length of anything, uh, let's actually go here. Uh, uh, don't worry about this for that. This, I'm just using this as scrap paper somewhat. Okay. All right. So. Let me um, give you guys, what is the one thing that we always talk about? Oh, there you go. You see this, the quotes. My string. I think I already have something called my string, so let's just call it uh, STR or something. I don't know. String for short or something. Whoops. Oh, okay, wait, I went to string str. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so what is the one thing as a programmer, C sharp programmer, that you should always be doing whenever you encounter or you want to explore any kind of class or anything? What is it? I always throw in that at you. And it's very important for you to remember. If I wanted to see a string, right, str, I have something of type string. If I wanted to explore what kind of built-in functions or properties it has, what do I need to do? In any class, basically. Enter a dot. Exactly, yeah, just dot and see what's up. Blip, there you go. So by, by using the dot, I'm cracking it open. I'm opening it to see, hey, man, what kind of information, what kind of cool stuff you have that I can use that your creator created or added so that I can use it, you know? What kind of tools that your creator provide me so that I can use you and do cool stuff? That is what that dot means, okay? Very important. Right here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right, so then uh, we, we we look around, we see things, uh, we're just going to do some of, you know, you can see something contains, copy to, count, uh, we, we see, you know, a couple of things, we're just going to go over, you know, index, insert, I'm just going to go over some of these, you know, length, oh, look at that, this is a property because it has that wrench thingy, so properties, it's a property, and this is a, um, a method. So as properties, it has the length. Hmm. Is that useful, you think, to know at least overall? So gets the length of characters in the string. That's, that's really useful, right? I think. Okay, so that is the first one that we are going to learn. Uh, the first one is going to be length. And, yeah, string length. It's one of the new ones that we're gonna learn here. Uh, and that is the first one. That is kind of the most basic string property or method that we can learn. And uh, well, so what do you think this, uh, well, what do you think this does? Uh, this, uh, well, gives you length of the string, right? Length of string. 
Uh, th this is, I'm just going to cut and paste this here. Oops. Right here. Yeah, string.length gives you the, the length of the string. Why would you want to know the name of the string? I mean, uh, know the length. Hello? You need to make changes to it. Uh, having the length is one of the quickest ways to, to do that. That's right. That's right. Okay, so here's string dot length. There you go. Gives you length of the string. I'm just gonna put it somewhere just so it doesn't really uh, crash or anything. Uh, temp. Put it in temp. All right. So yeah. So this returns uh, the length of the string. Yeah. Sometimes you want to know the length of the string just so you can maybe manipulate it and do things to the end of the string, the last five or the last three, or the first five or the last or, or the first um, the first two, or cut it in half, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So length, it, it's kind of a, a pretty important function to know. That way you can, you know, you have a quantifiable handle on, on your strings. You know how many characters there are. So remember, yeah, how many characters there are in, yeah, gives you the length of the string in character. Um, yeah, how many characters? Uh, let's see. Actually, let me use the length of the string. Um, how many cars? Yeah. All right, that's a that's a pretty good one. That's a very good one. Um, what could be another uh, function that we can uh, use? Uh, so we have length. Um, what's another thing that we want? Um, another one is let's see, uh, tem equals string dot. What if I say to lower? Lowercase? Yeah. Isn't that powerful? It can be. Yeah. Makes it all lowercase, which is really, really, really powerful here. Uh, to lower here. Uh, I'm just going to yeah, just going to create this for now, I guess. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. It returns something and makes it too lower, pretty much. All right. So remember, this is this returns a string that is a lowered string version of whatever you're giving it. All right. Um, actually, I'm just gonna for now. I'm just gonna do this right here. Uh, string length, and I'm gonna keep temp with this for now. That way, I could just keep using temp. Okay. So now um, here. So guess what else you can do? What can I do? Well, how could do I get the turn them into uppercase characters? What do you think? Upper? That's right. Um, makes it all uppercase, which again is really really useful when you want to do comparisons as well. If you want to make sure that two strings are, if you're comparing for equality, make them both uppercase or compare them both in their uppercase or lowercase, and then they'll return you know, the same or not. Because lowercase characters and higher case characters are different. Uh, they're, they're not the same, especially in C-sharp. OK, so I think I need to write that as well, right? Yeah, so remember, uppercase, car, lowercase are different. Very important. Okay, so very nice. Very, very nice. So far so good, right? So now we're getting handles on on sweet, sweet uh, string manipulation here. Um, I'm not, let's say we have the string. Another that I wanted to show you was, uh, let's check out trim. You guys see what it says? Removes all leading and trailing occurrences of a set of characters specified in an array. Hmm. 
So that is really strong. It also has trim end and trim start. So trim by default gets rid of spaces. Oh yeah. Well, so I'm just just spaces. Okay, okay. No, no, by default. No. You could do anything you want. Ah. You could say, hey, trim all, um, I don't know, all T's or something. Yeah. Gets rid of all trailing. And starting um, characters of the type you provided. There you go. So actually, for spaces, you would just do this. I think that stream spaces. All right. So it's it's pretty powerful. It's very very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense? Should I yeah. explain it a bit further, or, or that's legit? Because yeah, I mean, it's really useful if you, especially if you want to get rid of spaces. And it tells you too. Remember, you could tell what characters are, um, you know, what a function does and how it looks and what it returns and what it takes. Um, just by hovering over and one thing we need to go over which I just remembered is uh, let's see mm -hmm. hold on where's the stuff that we need to practice I think it's over here somewhere yep all right. All right. Yeah, so trim that cleans up the trailing ones. Okay. Uh, so you guys are getting the hang of how powerful this 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 kind of is and how it you know well how it becomes a powerful depending on how you use it. Uh, now another one which is really this one is really really useful is string dot contains Ooh, what do you think this does my friends it looks for uh, a string yeah within a string yeah well the string that you have that you in your string yeah yeah so it looks for uh, a string within a string and returns whether or not that string is in there so, uh, returns whether or not a string is inside your string. Um, can you use uh, abstractions, uh, I guess regular expressions, to like find things in a string? Like, yes. So you wanted to find a number? But you don't know the exact digits. Yeah, it takes um, regular expressions, yes. But we will be doing that later, which I, which I need to add that here too. Regular expressions, right here. Uh, yeah, you could pretty much give it. Hey, does it contain this? And I think one of the overloads has. Um, one of the regular expression or a comparator uh, that you can uh, compare that you can pass it to, I think. Or really, if you're doing that, you could just use a regular expression, which in case you wouldn't need that. Uh, yeah, the C sharp is very good with regular expressions, by the way, which we'll get to. All right, so yeah, does uh, our string contain Bob? Also remember, before we uh, we do we start we continue. Uh, also remember that there is such thing as the string object, and the string object has 
cool things. It, it has methods on itself too. So you see, it's concatenate things there, right? Concatenate a whole bunch of different things. Compare whether string A and B are equal, right? And it has a whole bunch of, um, you know, it has a, a, a couple of useful, uh, but we'll do that later. This is uh, that's the class string. Okay, I also went, hold on, uh, which we'll do later. Class methods. Standard on case. Hold on a second. right here all right so yeah so we'll get to that one later contains contains is pretty powerful right uh, now well before we do that what is the one thing that we forgot that is very important how do we concatenate strings to another one with a plus sign exactly string con let me, uh, yeah. concatenation, concatenation uses plus side. Very important. You can concatenate things by using string dot concatenate or concat. Um, or just use the plus sign. You could just say my plus word. There you go. Kind of like that. We haven't forgotten that one, of course, right? Good, good, good. That's very important. Uh, right here. Got to keep using it. All right, so continuing. Uh, contains very very important let's see what else we got here don't worry about it um, okay so we got temp there's a certain ones two more or three that I want you guys to know um, copy two count don't worry about any of those okay don't worry, worry. Ooh, okay the next one is a little bit tricky uh, well not tricky but yeah we'll see it's not tricky, but it's important to know, I think. Index of. Now, remember that I told you that it's the strings are somewhat of a character array, right? Yes? Yep. Right? Are you guys there? Hello? Yes. Okay. Okay, good, good. Uh, and, yeah, so it's important. So everything is treated by an index, sort of. So when I say string... A string index of what do you think I'm looking for or what I want to get? Uh, it will give you the place in the string. Exactly, yes. It will give you the place in the string where what you're looking for is. Which is important if you if you know it depends on what you want. For example, if I wanted to know where in that string was it is the index of the dot in our string, right? If I went like this, hey, boom, give me the dot. So that would give me returns the position of given character or string. Yeah, so here, this gives me, uh, this would be the equivalent of where the dot is. Right? Which is pretty cool. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, and it can be pretty useful. Okay, um, now, uh, so again, um, is the index of right here so I'm just gonna let me just put it somewhere 
index equals index of here. Okay. So this returns a number, which is the position of the dot in our string, right? Nice. So far, so good? So far, so good? Nice. Okay. So now, um, let's see what else we can, um, you know, what, what we can find here. So we got strings. And so we got the index. Mm, join. Length. We already know length, right? Yes? Yep. Yes. We know length. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pad left. Actually, no, we don't need. Eh, don't forget about that. Oh, oh, what's this? Replace and remove. Oh, th those look good. Nice. Oh, let's check out what remove does. Return to string in which a specified number of characters in the current instance beginning at a position have been deleted. Okay. So basically, that that tells you it has an overload. Oh, um, that's another thing we need to go over. Uh, one second, sorry. Before I forget. Uh, yeah, so that string tells you, hey, let's, uh, this is really, really, operation. Oh, operation below function. Okay, right here. Okay, so yeah, so we have string dot remove. Um, so basically, return a string in which a specified number of characters in the current instance beginning have been deleted. All right, so basically, this tells you remove well let's see it has two different versions it has one say hey remove how many like where do you want to start deleting and then return anything before or at, well anything before that somewhat all right and this to this one you can use it you could give it where do you want to start deleting and how many uh, well, let's just do the simple one for now. Okay, so, hmm, start index. Okay, so, so the, the way this works, right, is you tell it where do you want to start deleting, and then it returns, it deletes everything till the end. And then it returns anything before that. So in this case, right, if I give it, let's say the index for this is one, right, here. It's going to be one, like basically how many you want, where, where do you want, uh, two, three, four. So let's say, I'm just going to count it, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For now, let's just say nine, right? So if I say, hey, and remember, read what it says, read what it tells you. That's how you, that's how you learn, right? It says, hey, a start index. This says, hey, where do you want me to start leading? If I give it nine, what do you think that's going to do? Let's see, uh, Dan, where is it going to start deleting and what is it going to return? So, it would start deleting everything after the day, uh, month, year. After here, right? Yeah. So this is going to be gone, pretty much. And you're just going to get this here. So it's going to return this here. All right. Um, is that, I mean, is that clear somewhat? I mean, it, it tells you, yeah. 
yeah so start deleting basically what the simple way is start deleting at index number uh, in this case nine return non deleted characters all right so let me ask you a question though are you guys ready I'm about I'm about to give you a little little check here a little test a little test what would happen if I said uh, let's see I'm just doing this what would happen if I said I will give you guys some 30 10 seconds what would happen if I said <laughs> yeah, I'll give you guys 10 seconds I'm turn my lights on what would that do uh, let me turn my lights on for a second. Oh, I can hear me. Yeah, what do you think that does, or that will do? This is the string up here. My eyes are up here, boys. Right here. What do you think that will do? What well, would it return? All right, you guys have five seconds. Not really sure how that's supposed to work. Well, I mean, you're, we're combining two things here. So let's break it down. Okay, so what is index of supposed to do? I'm sorry. I... Yeah, well, I'm using I'm using index here. You see this index that we're getting here. Yeah. I am plugging it into the remove function here. <clears throat> you just want to remove the one character that's at index, which in this case is the period. Well, no, I mean, or what? Remove after that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, sound it out with me. So, first of all, what is this doing? What is this number and what what does it mean? Where in here, what does it mean? What does it represent? We're getting the. Yeah, getting where the getting where the dot is. Yeah, that's all. So it gives me the position of the period, right? Okay. And this function takes a position of where you want to start deleting, right? Right. So if I give it the index of where we found the period, which I am, it says delete everything afterwards, and just return this. So this is going to return everything before the period, pretty much. Let's see, beginning at a specified, yeah, correct. It includes the period. So do you guys see how that's useful to us uh, in a previous exercise? Yeah. So basically you would just do this plus dot C or something. And that would, um, yeah, that would be it pretty much. All right. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, are you guys good with that? Yeah, that's pretty cool, it's, actually. It's, yeah, it's very powerful. Once you get, once you get it and once you understand it, it's really, really powerful. Okay, um, yeah, so the index of this is one of the most versatile and, and useful functions because you could combine it with pretty much uh, anything in there, especially with remove. You want to remove things in there. So again, you could have used this, these to, um, to solve the problem that we were working with before, which was remove 
anything after the dot and put a Z in it. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now the next one, which is one of the most powerful ones and most useful one, which we use all the time. Now, what do you think replace does? Replace. They straight up have a replace feature. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> it is powerful as hell. You could give it characters or strings. So you could just say, if you don't like the word boobies or something, right? Or if you're looking for, let me see what. I don't know. Uh, if you if you don't, I don't know. Um, basically, replace anything with with anything else. So, if you let's say you don't like the number A, and just replace it with the number four or something, right? Or uh, replace. All number eights, or actually just any word, really. Any word, replace it with guess what that is? Blank? With a space, yeah. It could be a blank or an empty. So basically, that is deleting any kind of word in that string, right? Or you could replace it with a blank here. Of course, there's a difference between a blank and nothing, right? A blank is an actual space. When you when you say any word, is there you need an expression for that? You can't just write any word. Any word. There could be anything you want. Okay. Okay. We're we're saying any specific word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not literally anything. No. Well, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> Over there, it could be uh, replace. Um, Anything with a dot, well, dot, one, two, three, and just basically that would remove the one, two, three from, from the top one here, All right? That would delete the dot, one, two, three from, from the top of the string, yeah. Also remember that these return a value, so you have to use the return value. Just by doing this, it doesn't really do anything. You have to return it and put it somewhere else, even if it's a string itself. You can put it in another string or create another string if you want. I mean, uh, put it in itself or create another one. Okay, so uh, replace is it? I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? Very powerful. Okay, is that legit? That is very legit. legit. Okay, now uh, one of the last ones that I want to go over here. Um, Damn. Uh, well, we have start with, which is start with is a type of contain, right? But start with uh, uh, I don't know, hello or something. Uh, returns true if it starts with um well, given word yeah that one's very straightforward i assume right and i'm going to put it under contains i'm going to put it together with contains because they're very similar right all right and the last one i want to go over is called split we already went okay there you go Nice. All right. The last one is split. Now, split is an extremely powerful function which is used all the time. All the time. And it splits the, the, well, the string into an array of strings current string into an array of strings so 
Uh, well, given given a separator. All right. So what it is, it takes a separator. It says, hey, man, what do you want me to separate this string on? And I'll create different strings uh, and put it in an array for you uh, based, uh, separated by that character, man. What do you want me to do? What do you want this? So in the case of our string up here, if we wanted to separate something by the dot, what would be created? Uh, Dave. Huh? If I use string split dot, what would be created? Uh, it'll create two sets of string. That's right. It will create an array with two sets of strings, right? Inside. Yes. The first one would be this with this value here, right? And the second one would be uh, this value here, correct? Beautiful. All right. So, um, and yeah, so it would be you know, create some kind of array. And uh, yeah, again, it would be the value of the first one would be here, the string arrays. And the second one, it would be uh, here. So index zero would have, of the array would have this value and index one would have the array, I mean the value of this here. Um, and that, yeah, there you go. I mean, that is, um, do we need a little, do we need to expand that one a little bit or, or it's kind of straightforward? I mean, we ourselves were experimenting with it before we started the video, but uh, do you think it's, it's legit enough where we're good? What do you think? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. We, get, uh, we didn't go through the what it creates them as, right? With the zero and the one, or using the brackets. No, but uh, it's I think it's self-explanatory. Yeah. Well, just to make it drive it a hundred percent, right? Let's show them what it looks like. Uh, in. Let's see. What it looks like in memory and what it actually creates. That that would think will drive it home 150%. Uh, what, what do we call it? Get what? Um, get date format, I think. Get date format. Okay, so here. So here I split it on the dot. So I split this value here, right? This is the string. This is the string currently here. Well, this is what it's inside here. There's a dot. This is the value of the whole thing. And this would split it. Oh, I didn't put it anywhere. Get them. Uh, yeah, you see, I didn't put it in any kind of container. But let's say if it gives it to be in the immediate window here. Mm -hmm. There you go. You, you, by the way, remember, you could see the value of things in the immediate window at the moment if you're debugging. Very powerful. Yeah, so a split, after you use the split of the dot, it splits it into the first half which you know before the dot and the second one the second uh, item in the array index one it's the one two three which is the, the things after the dot and if there were much more dots in there it would cut them up into more pieces right so it, it's very very powerful it's extremely useful um, to mess around with strings and to know what what's going on and, um, and yeah, I think that is a pretty good overview of what strings are and how we, um, how we manipulate them, how we can play around with them. And remember, anything can be a string. Um, you could turn any number into a string. You can convert anything into a string um, by just putting a two string on it, right? And by the way, the reverse is also true in a way. If you have a number, a string that is one, two, three, you could do uh, the number 
just making up anything dot parse there's a string called dot parse and then well hold on um like let's say you want to um convert a string into a long right or an int that int dot parse five actually 50 let's just say 55 all right okay this turns this string into the number 55 and then you can use it so you can convert things back and forth which is really really powerful you could do the same thing with long um, or any of the other types all right um, is that is that cool was that sorry I got disconnected my internet cut out oh no problem no problem yeah what I was um, just finishing up is like to remind you guys that you can use the parse function to convert things from a string to another type or from another type to a string um, yeah so for example let's say you had the string 55 somewhere that's a string but you wanted to turn it into a number you could just say int dot parse parse means hey try to convert this or try to parse it as a number and uh, and then treat it as a number give me a number so it is very very powerful and this is something that I think should be at the top of the strings manipulation I think a reminder right here member can convert strings into other things like numbers like hints so that is uh, that's something to keep in mind there. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. But yeah, so it's something to keep in mind. So are we good on how split works and most of these functions here? Yes. Yep. All right. So now you guys are string pros. Is that what you guys are? You guys string pros? Whoa. Maggie. I'll work on it a little more. <laughs> Something oh, yeah. I can use at my job now. Nice. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yes, because I need to confirm a serial number of a specific hard drive. It needs to be a certain number of characters in the serial number. Otherwise, it's wrong. Oh, uh, there you go, my friend. So I could use an if else on a string link. Exact. Oh, dude, yes. You could just create it, create a file, you know, create some kind of file or something. And uh, put them all in there and just read them all one by one. Later on, we'll, we need to do kind of, you know, how to do file input and stuff like that, which is pretty easy. That's for file input output. Yes. Uh, but yeah, this is legit right here. This is very legit. I'm going to get latest and I'm going to upload this. Get latest. I think we should be good on the latest, hopefully. We... Oh, wow. Mm, oh, complex? All right. Oh, no, no, complex. Well, let's see. Do we have any complex? Resolve complex. Merge. Uh, I guess both. Yeah, sure. Both. Oh, okay, nice. New index. Let's just move this around here. Some stuff. Uh, okay, here we go. Accept merge. Get all conflicts. I think all conflicts are done. All right, so I'm gonna get latest again just to be sure. Check in examples. Examples. Here we go. Beautiful. Okay, yes, yeah, so this 
I have to, uh, just in case, how big is this thing here? I'm gonna, I've got a link in here, just in case, and I gotta upload the one. Uh, hmm. Okay, why is this all the way over here? I need to switch this. Hmm, that is all. Guess I'll do this. Do this manually, which is a pain. There we go. God, this sucks, but it's okay. Okay, so yeah, so how are you guys doing? You guys uh, feel so more comfortable now with strings? Know where it's at. If you guys get any questions about strings, uh, hopefully you feel a little bit more comfortable with manipulating on how to mess around with them. And you will be getting them at interviews. Uh, it is one of the, you know, kind of the go-tos for this. Uh, I guess I'll stop recording there. Uh,